Are you looking for a way to get bi-directional syncing in Airtable? It's not yet possible when you're building a synced relationship natively in Airtable to have it work in two directions. I want to be able to change information in either one of my places and have it instantly be reflected with those changes in the other set of data as well. Well, thanks to WhaleSync, a third-party plugin tool, we're going to actually be able to build this exact functionality with Airtable today. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, and we've made it our mission to help you get organized and automated with no-code tools. Airtable's at the forefront of all of these no-code tools as an amazing back-end database solution for you. And in today's video, of course, we need to talk about how we're going to be connecting two different tables through a bi-directional sync so that we can edit information in either one of those places and have it instantly be updated. But before I get into the heart of the video, I want to first invite you to check out my Airtable crash course. If you're new to Airtable, you haven't explored all of the features of it just yet, you're going to get a lot of value out of this crash course because it's going to walk you through step by step all the key features of Airtable so that you'll walk away with a fundamental knowledge of how Airtable works. If that's of interest to you, check out the crash course in the links below this video. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of things and talk about the two-way sync. So you may already be aware that if you have a set of data just like this, here I have contacts and I've labeled them contacts one. Well, if I want to have this data represented somewhere else natively inside of Airtable, I don't have a great choice. My only option is to create a share view here, a shareable grid view link, and I can sync it to other bases. But the big problem with this is it only works in one direction. I have to have my source data and then my mirror of that source data, and I can't edit the information anywhere that I sync that base to. It's just a, a mirror, it's just a reflection of the data source itself. And that's not what we're looking for with an advanced sync. And so that's where we're gonna bring in whale sync and it's gonna help us to create this. Now to start out, what I have is my table of contacts here. I've got seven contacts, first name, last name, email, and notice that the full name is a formula field. And on this formula, I'm just concatenating or combining the first name with the last name. Pretty straightforward. So nothing complex about this data schema, and I don't yet have my second table fully fleshed out yet. So in my second source here, I have a place called contacts2, and it's a brand new database. I've done nothing to it in terms of upgrading this table just yet. So what we're going to do is get started in WhaleSync. going to pop open into WhaleSync, and first we need to establish what WhaleSync refers to as a base. So a base is, as they say here, going to contain everything we need to configure a connection to start syncing data between apps. Now I want to pause here and mention that WhaleSync allows for us to sync a lot of different tools together. It's not just Airtable. So maybe you have a CRM in a different system that you want to sync with data that lives in Airtable. WhaleSync is a great option for you. That would mean the same thing effectively where you can change data in either one of these places and have it instantly reflecting those changes in both of the data sets. So, but for our example, we're going to keep it to Airtable on Airtable. So let's create that new base. And first we have to pick our app to sync. When I select here, you'll see that we have the option for Airtable, Webflow, Notion, and Bubble, and more are on the way. I believe they're working on Shopify and Stripe among others. So a lot of different data sources that you might have information in can now be instantly reflected in multiple places across all your apps and kept up to date everywhere. In our case, we're gonna pick Airtable. So let's select right here and we're gonna authorize. So we have to get our API all synced up here. So if you've never done this before, flip back into Airtable, go into the upper right corner and find your account. And inside of here, you will find your API key. Keep this information private. Do not share it with anyone because of course, when you share your API, you are basically giving somebody authorization to act on your behalf inside of your Airtable software. So be really thoughtful about sharing this. But of course, we're going to trust WhaleSync here and paste our API in right here. Now we have to enter the base sharing link. So let's first find out how to get a base sharing link. They have a nice little help doc that they've presented for us so we can make the selection to go here. And it's going to walk us through step by step. We click share in the upper right. 
Then we say uh, share publicly and then we're going to enable the shared base link. And then lastly, we're going to copy that base sharing link. So let's go back to Airtable now. Go up to share as it said. We're going to share publicly. Turn on to enable shared bases and make sure that we have all the right settings here, allowing viewers to copy data out and also to show extensions added to the base. We can restrict access with a password if we want to make sure that only Whale Sync is going to ever use this shared link. Let's actually access this right now. I'll do a password here and I'll just make one up. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Very creative password. Let's go ahead and set that and we're going to be all set here to get this going. I will copy this now out of here and swing on back into Whale Sync. In my case, I did opt to password protect this link. So I have to go in and tell Whale Sync that and I need to enter my password here. One, two, three, four, five, six and I will authorize. So now I've taught Whale Sync, hey, get synced up with contacts one. But that's only part of it, right? This connection needs to be saved, yes. But what I also need to do is now connect it to the other table or the other app. Remember, you can use any different app here, but in our example, Airtable to Airtable. So I pick Airtable again, and we're gonna authorize yet again. I need to flip back into my account now and grab that API once again. Let's get back into Whale Sync and paste our API key back in. Remember to keep this private. And then we're gonna get that base sharing link for the second place. So flip into your second source, your second table or whatever else you're syncing here and follow the exact same step. So in our case, we're going to go up to share. We're going to share publicly, make sure that this is toggled on and grab our link out of here. Again, if you wanna restrict access with a password, you may. I'm going to only do it on one side of this sync and not the other so that you can see both sides of the equation. So here I'm going to copy copy that link out, flip back to whale sync, paste the link in. And in this case, because we did not use a password, I don't need to toggle on this final step. You can go ahead and authorize here, give it a second to think. And you see that yes, it was successful in identifying contacts too. So that's what we want to talk to there. Let's save that connection as well. So now we've completed step one. We have connected our two apps together, but what we need to do now is actually map out the tables that are going to be talking to each other. So let's flip over to map tables, the second step. And I really only have one table in each of these places. I have table one, and you'll also notice that I can access specific views if I would like to, to sync one view to another view. But in our case, I just want to sync table to table. So I'm selecting table one. And of course, over here on contacts two, I only have the one table as well. I wasn't very creative when naming this example up. So I've got table one going to table one, from contacts one to contacts two. The thing to note here is that we have the option to turn this on bi-directionally, which is what it's set to as default, so that if I make a change in two, it'll be reflected in one and vice versa. But I could also set a direction and establish one of these as the parent. So I could say, well, maybe I only want changes to go one direction from contacts one to contacts two or the other way around. So make your decision here with these arrows. And then once you're set with this, we can go ahead and map our fields. So in the final step here, and this is where it's going out and trying to find the different fields inside of our tables, this is where we're going to say, hey, this particular field is going to be reflected with a synced version over in this particular field in the other one. But of course, you'll notice that in my contacts to base inside of my table here, I haven't built those fields yet. So let's get to work on that. So let's flip on back into our data source now. I'm gonna go into my table, and of course I need to add the same things that I had in my previous table as well. So I can say first name, I can say last name, I can say email, make that an email field type, and create all of that. Now the last piece here is I had a full name formula in my primary field, so I'll set that up here as well write a quick concatenate that is going to combine the first name with the last name. Once I have that in place, let's save it up and we're good to go. Now I don't have any data here that I want to start with. So I'm gonna delete all of these records and flip back now into Whale Sync. So in order to bring in the new changes that I just made, I'm gonna to have to first refresh because if I just look here at contacts two, it doesn't instantly see all the changes that I just made to it structurally in the new fields that I've created. So let's hit refresh 
and give whale sync a minute it's going to go out look at those tables again and come back to us with new information so what i need to sync here is first name i need to match first name to first name that's pretty easy second one i'm going to add a new field here go last name to last name and again see that we have the option here to choose what type of sync we have of course we're demonstrating a bi-directional sync but you do have flexibility here to set it one or other direction even at the field level lastly i'm going to add my final field here we're going to go with email mapping to email now you might ask yourself why i'm not mapping full name to full name and that's because the full name field is a formula that's deriving its value from the first and last names so long as i have the first and last names syncing then the formula will be computing the current full name so if a change is made to a name it's going to be reflected in the output of the formula therefore i don't need to sync that information also of course a formula field type is dependent a dependent field means we can't edit data directly to that field because of the fact that it derives its value elsewhere so dependent fields are not able to be used in a sync because of the fact that we can't edit the data at all so bear that in mind when you are setting up your sync you have to map independent fields things like text things like numbers, things like single select fields. Those are the types of fields that are going to sync nicely. All right, now that we have this all set up, let's go ahead and save our base. This was the third and final step of getting our sync working. And we now need to turn our sync on. So once I've done this, it's gonna ask us, hey, make sure that you've backed up your data just in case and that you understand the risks. Yes, yes, yes. I'm ready to go. Let's turn the sync on and see what happens. Now, in order to see this more easily, let's go ahead and put these two things side by side so that we can make a change in one and see how quickly it shows in the other place. So for example, let's take Lori here. Maybe we misspelled her name and it doesn't end with E, it's just L-O-R-I. I make the change here. And as I make the change, you see that within a few seconds, it's updated in the other place. You might also notice that this data isn't mapping one to one, meaning that it's not uh, exactly in the same order. Well, let's go ahead and set some rules here so that we can sort this information. Let's sort by last name alphabetically on both of these areas. So I'll go ahead and sort here as well. And once I've got that set up, we can now see across the lines here, across the rows, what is matching with what because they're now in the same order. So let's make a different change here. Maybe Mariana has two N's at the end of her name. I make the change here and there it's showing up in the synced information. I can make a change here as well, i.e. for Kinsey maybe, and we're gonna see that information updated here. So it's getting updated pretty darn close to real time and it doesn't matter where I make that change, it's going to be impacted in both sources so that a change in one is always gonna be reflected in the other set of data as well. So this is obviously pretty cool stuff, but the next question you might ask yourself is, so what's it gonna cost me? Well, let's take a look. Here we are on WhaleSync's pricing page. You can get started for free experiencing you know, real-time two-way syncs between your favorite apps but when you get to the point where you are leveraging this at any kind of consistent click, you're probably going to be at least on the $39 a month for individuals. Now notice that this only allows you to sync 1000 records. So this might be where you leverage the views, where you're bringing in a specific view so that you're only syncing current relevant data and not old archived data as well. This will help you reduce the number of records and keep you in budget but we get the ability then to create 1000 synced records two whale sync bases remember a base is the connection that we just established so you get two of those and we get two way sync capabilities unlimited updates and slack support now in terms of what you can work with you can sync data between the big four that i showed you here airtable webflow notion and bubble.io now moving on past that if you're spending a little bit more money at the 129 a month plan you are looking at 5,000 records in the sync five bases on your sync capabilities and a lot more tools in the coming soon area so you'll notice that there are two options here that are activated upon request and we've got one two three four new integrations coming soon shopify as i mentioned stripe as i mentioned but also hubspot and webflow e-commerce now, of course, there's also a business plan available. This is a contact us, so I'm not exactly sure what this would run, but if you're doing this, you're looking at additional synced capabilities with Salesforce and Affinity. 
So a lot of different options here with whale sync, but my favorite one is just showcasing one table to another table. Let's get that information automatically updated with a bi-directional sync. I think this is a great opportunity for you to go out and play with some other third-party tools and WhaleSync is a Y Combinator startup. They went through the Y Combinator process in Silicon Valley. So they know a thing or two and have built a pretty awesome tool to explore. Check it out for yourself. And if you would like, use our affiliate link below. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel and you want to stay up on top of more no-code news like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found this to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website to see how we can help. We offer an exclusive free training that teaches the fundamentals of no-code tools, including automation. We also have some paid services available, including advanced courses, no-code hourly consulting, as well as custom project consulting. So swing on by to get the help you need, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.